You're joining me here today at Partridge Fishery uh, for the second episode of the Walks and All. We're on Holbar today. Holbar is a lake that, believe it or not, I've never fished before. But we've heard really good things and we catch a few skimmers on it. And I'm hoping that we're going to get a lot of bites. Uh, we're just coming out of winter. We're, yeah, the daffodils are cut, just slowly coming out. Buds are on trees. The water is still cold, but it's warming up. So what we're going to do, we're going to try and catch a few skimmers for you. We're going to have a really, really basic side tray uh, with bait. We're going to go through that with you in a minute. But yeah, hopefully we will um, catch a lot of fish and give you a lot of tips. Right, bait for my session. Um, we're coming out of winter now, uh, so I'm thinking that we're gonna start targeting some better fish and we're gonna try and fish for better fish in a way what uh, governs it to pellets. Um, we've got some micros, we've got some four mils and we've got some expanders. We have got some maggots in case we need them, but I'm hoping we don't need them because we've come to a lake today where I've not actually fished before. So, we're sort of playing it by ear, so what we're going to do, we're going to kick off quite negative with pellets uh, and then we're going to see where the session takes us. Obviously, if we, had, if we have to introduce maggots, then we can go down that route, but hopefully, with the temperatures warming up a little bit now, we should be able to catch a few skimmers on pellets. Bait preparation, um, we've learned this off our captain, and I'm, I'm thinking that everybody's going to be on this one now. Pellets, um, they're in the sealed tub. Again, saturate your pellets overnight, fill it level. When we do open the pellets up, we've got a sandcastle of pellets. But what that means is that all the pellets have soaked up all the water. They're as good as you'll get them. Everything's soaked through. They'll do whatever you want with them. You can put them in a little ball. You can fish them on a method. You can do whatever you need to. For this session, we're going to hopefully be tapping a few micros in, fishing an expander on the hook, seeing if we can pick out a better skimmer. Um, but there'll be a little bit of pellets in the ground bait. Uh, ground bait again, or pellets should I say. We've done exactly the same, in the same way, with fours. These are F1 feed pellets. Uh, but again, like you can see, it's only 450ml of a tub that, but when they're in a tub, there's, there'll be quite a bit more than that once they've expanded and they've took all the water on. What it does with your four mils, because you've soaked the water through, in my mind, it means that when we're cupping them, everything sinks at a uniform rate. Once they're on the bottom, they can't soak in any silt, rubbish. You've still got all your smell of your pellets from what the pellets are out the bag. Uh, and if anything, it accentuates that smell. So it should draw a few more fish into your peg. Uh, these are what we'll be fishing on the hook. Uh, these are Pro Expanders, Sony Bates Pro Expanders. Dead easy to prepare. Um, all we're doing, my, my, my house is hectic enough. Um, Last night, put some of these in a bag, covered the pellets with water, tied them up, left them on the side. Come down to them this morning, everyone's perfect. Everyone, sh everyone should be a bite, everyone should be a skimmer, hopefully. We'll see if we can get through some. We mixed some ground bait this morning. What I've done, I've mixed it this morning before we've got on the bank. Again, because it's a cereal based ground bait, uh, a fish meal based ground bait, sorry. We've got another bit of cereal based ground bait there to go with it. Um, you want to get it as wet as you can. So I always do this. If I can't do it the night before, I'll do it the morning. If I can't do it in the morning, I'll do it as soon as I get on the bank. Um, it's dead easy to prepare. Saturate it. I like to do it just before it gets to probably a paste stage, if you know, if, if you get that. Once then, by the time you're on your bank and you're an hour or two hours after or whatever it is, it'll have soaked all the water up and we'll put it through a riddle and it'll be as good as you'll get. So what we've got mix-wise is F1 Dark and Sweet Skimmer. We've got, that's a two kilo bag, so we've got a kilo of F1 Dark to half a bag of Sweet Skimmer. Just to give it a bit more smell. Hopefully it attracts a few skimmers in our peg. So what I will do for you is show you what we've got and what we'll end up with. So this is the mix as it comes. This looks horrible. But what it has done, it's sucked all the water up, 
still obviously bits of big claggy pieces in it and stuff like that um, and he's going through a riddle so I'll show you what it ends up like right don't worry about your ground bait being like this when you're chucking it on the riddle thinking that you've overdone it or anything because once it's pushed through it'll be beautiful and that sweet skimmer even though we've got a little bit of fish meal content with your f1 dark the sweet skimmer gives it a lovely smell and if i was a fish i'd be first into buffet so that now is through a riddle it's perfect there's no big lumps and bumps we'll have a little bit of activity in it with the sweet skimmer but the fish meal content should bring them in and hopefully keep them there how we're going to feed, or how I'm hoping to feed, is we're going to feed a positive line and we're going to feed a negative line, both long, both at like 13, 14 and a half metres once we plumb the per peg. See what we're working with. So one line will uh, give them a bit of bait and the other line will be really negative and we'll see which one's the best. Right, plumbing up the peg. Um, plummet choice is a 30 gram cyclops, uh, nice nice flat bottom plummet, heavy enough so that you can feel anything on the bottom, you'll feel if it's sill, if it's harder, just by lifting the plummet up and down, uh, I'll show you in a minute with the elastics, you, you, can, you can tell with lifting and dropping what you're fishing on, whether it be harder, softer, um, we're looking for a uniform depth, hopefully, if we can find the same depth in two pegs, it'll be a dream come true. Right, what I'm looking for when I'm plumbing up is, like I said, a hard-ish or harder bottom. So I can tell by lifting and dropping that plummet that it's not plugging in any silt. There might be a little bit there, but not too much. So we'll have a quick look around our peg. What? I'm looking to plumb up that because we're going to fish expanders and we're fishing for skimmers we want to really plumb up with the bottom of the body of your float so it's level with the water so I don't know if we can get in on that there that is dead depth and what you can see we're lifting and dropping it's not sticking it's not going anywhere it shouldn't be it drops off a tiny little bit there. Not much, two inches. Carry on looking to the right. And it comes up a little bit. Which works out, that feels a lot harder on that side. You can actually feel it donking down on the bottom. So what we've got there, is a peg to the left of the swim and a peg to the right of the swim exactly right with a tiny little bit of deeper water in the middle you won't call it much deeper i don't think it would make any much difference to it but more importantly what we've got is two pegs that we can fish with the same rig far enough away from us that we should have a good day's fishing Bait wise, what we're going to do, we're going to kick off the peg. I'm going to feed two pegs, both at 14 metres, or 14 and a half with a job, four. Uh, one at 10 to, one at 10 past. What we're going to do, we're going to feed the right hand side heavier. We're going to put two pots of ground bait on that and a few micros in it, but we'll leave that and let it settle. The peg to the left, we're going to go in and we're going to be, we're going to build that peg up. We'll fish with a little kinder pot. Um, we'll tap a few micros in and see how the peg develops. If we get an instant response, we know we can feed a bit more. If it's a bit slower, we can take our time, but we won't kill the peg. So, let's get on with it. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put a ball in, just squeeze it one-handed, just so it goes down. We've got about, it's got a bite over there. We've got, what have we got? Five foot. 
So I want some to go down and stay intact. And I still and I want a cloud going through the water to get a bit of a traction. So we're gonna put two pots in, like I said. And we're gonna leave this line alone. So what I'm gonna do, I've got the dolly butt on. I'm gonna feed this just short of the end of the dolly butt. Like we've um, gone through before, skimmers don't usually come. Well, the, the mass of skimmers, you'll always catch them fishing around your food. So, we'll feed half a metre short I'll put not half a metre, probably two and a half foot, two, two, yeah, two foot, short of where we're fishing. So same again, a ball squeeze one hand, I know I've not got smallest hands in the world, but and in that ground bait there's an odd micro, not very many, but enough to keep a few fish grazing and keep them happy. So that we settle in this peg and hopefully when we do go on it it'll be solid with skimmers. So we're gonna get this one in again. I'm gonna pot it in on the joint of the pole. Same place. But then what we have got Is that little bit more pole to go behind it if we need to? So this left hand swim, we'll feed it, and all I'm going to feed them is this many pellets, probably 100 micros there which in the grand scheme of things isn't a lot but we don't want to feed them too much we just want to feed them enough so that we can get a bite this one what I'm going to do I'm going to feed this exactly where I'm going to fish on the end of my dolly butt like a fiber marker and all we're going to do Tap a few in from about six inches. Make a tiny little bit of noise, not too much. And we'll see how we get on. So that's our swim sped. Uh, we're going to give them 10 minutes or so to settle. Um, while we're waiting for that, I'm going to talk you through the rigs. Right, I'm going to run you through the rigs. Starting off, this is the more positive rig of, of the two. Um, what we've got is a 6 to 8 elastic with a little tiny connector bead on top of it. It is all 16 mainline to a 0.4 bulk. Uh, what we've got with that, we've got two number 8 back shot, well, two number 8 back stops above it um, just to keep the rig still. Running down the rig, we have got 30 centimetres above the oak. A bulk of four number nines and then I've got three number nines droppers uh, going down to a six inch hook length to a 16's SFL to 011 so that's the more positive more static approach um, I have got another one set up what's a slightly heavier rig with slightly heavier droppers and a shorter hook length so what that would do if we're starting getting a few skimmers in your peg and we're getting a few finicky bites because of the shorter hook length and the the shot above the shorter hook length you should see your bites amplified a little bit more um, it just it it sorts the bites out for you um, what we've got on the lighter rig my favorite elastic ever my four to six is pink same again small connector going down to a 4 by 12 Cipri no, no back shot above this yet because we want to see how the rig's fishing. Um, we want to see what it's like first. We can always add back shot to it. This one again. We've got a bulk of four number nines, 
and two number 10s droppers above a six inch up length. Now this is a 16s F1 pellet to all 10. Um, that just lets us fish everything. It's a bit more finesse. We should get a few, few more fish watching it through the water. And it's more of a catch anything rig rather than a nailing them to the deck rig and getting a few fish in your net rig. Uh, but this one, when it gets a little bit tougher or the fish back off, you're always better sometimes having a, a lighter, more strung out rig where you can see a few more bites and you'll, you'll get a few more fish following it down. It could always get you a few more bites when it goes a bit tough. I'm going to start. I'm going to start off on my negative line. Um, again, like we said, we're fishing pellets. Got to tap a few micros in, maybe a little tiny bit of ground bait in. Not introduce much at the start, and we're going to see where the peg goes from there. So what I've done, we're fishing with four mils, like I said, uh, four mil expanders. I'm just gonna put a sprinkle of micros in, and we'll see what happens. Hopefully there's one there waiting for us, but I'm not quite sure on the stamp of the fish. So, if they're £2 each, you don't need to be hectic to um, amass a good weight. So what I'm going to do, just let me rig in, get my bulk, my, my bulk where I want it. Tap them micros, lift my rig back up, probably 10, 12 inches out of my water, let everything straighten up, and then slowly lower the rig down, and we're fishing. So like I said, I'm unsure on what we're fishing for really. We just want to see, we want to get a few bites first, and then we can make a decision on how we're going to feed and what we're going to feed from that. Obviously we've gone down the pellet route so we are governing it to better fish. What I would like to think that there's an odd skimmer waiting for us. We have fed the more positive line uh, to our right hand side of the swim. What you can always do as well while you're fishing. Just keep having a look. Obviously if you're seeing any bubbling or fizzing, anything like that, it's always a good indication. We had a bite then. We'll come back, check our rig. It's always a good indication of if there's fish feeding. Again, if you've got a visual, a visual aid where they're, um, they're fizzing in your swim, it saves you time. Keep going on it for a look and seeing if there's one there, or you're not wasting time basically. You'd know when they were there. So what I'm going to do this time, rather than feed a few micros. I'm going to feed my hands are too big for this but I'm going to feed the tiniest nugget of ground bait just because it's a bit livelier than feeding a few micros and it might drag us a fish when there's not too many fish to be had yet. So we'll see. All of it experimenting. And seeing what we're working with. We're back out. Back on your spot. Back on the end of the pole. Tip a little nugget in. And what I'm going to do is lift the rig out completely. Lie it into the side all the bulk over the top of where you fed 
give it a minute and then slow let slow your rig down so we've had an indication so we know we've got some fish somewhere in our peg and what I've just got is a few telltale signs from the from the other swim what we fed earlier uh, just in a little tiny bit of fizzing so it's a great indication that there's a few fish over that going bait now and that the uh, longer you leave them obviously the more confident they'll be and you've a better better chance of catching multiple fish so we don't want to go on it and disturb them too early and the ideal scenario is the left hand swim gets a bit stronger and we can start bouncing fish from one to the other and when that happens is when you can really put a good weight together Find one there. It's for a, a very lively skimmer. You see where he's up this one because it was a bit scatty. Full of energy though. Yeah, nice. Those are the ones we want. Nice fish, good weight builder. So because we've caught that one on our strung out rig. Again, we'll repeat the process. And what we're going to do, as tiny as my hands will make them, put a little nugget in of ground bait with the odd micro in it. gonna see what's going on. What we're saying, feed first. Why the rigging? Wind's getting a bit horrible. Uh, the mast droppers have just kicked in, so that rig will be fishy more or less now. But what the rig does, it gives the fish the chance to see the bait. And we've got one what's just dolphined <laughs> but that is a really good example of why that rig change 
Well, we know there's fish in the peg because we can see the indications on the bigger and heavier float. But sometimes they just need a bit of encouragement to eat. Which is where your lighter rig over the top of your more positive rig comes in. Just because it gives the fish the chance to see your bait. And it's not a small fish, this. So gauging on these last fish, you don't need a lot of bites to amass a good weight. I mean, this fish, it's a good fish. I won't need many of them. Nope. You can see why they catch uh, such good weights. And if I had to guess, I'd say with where that sucks, let's add that as it's as it's felt. Look that three pound. So it looks as if the light rig is working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna persevere with this, see where the peg goes. Still on the, the left hand swim, the less negative swim, and we're getting a few bites, and we're catching a few fish. Um, what I am noticing though, more and more now, is there's an odd bubble coming up, and there's an odd sign of a fish on the positive line. Which usually, if we can see them fizzing, there's normally a few there waiting for us. So, what I want to do. Let's try and catch one more off this left hand swim. And I can't wait any longer. I need to uh, have a look on that right hand side where we've been a bit more positive and see what's happening with that. So, ideally, if we can catch one more off this one, it'll tee us up nicely for bouncing a few fish off each line. There is fish in, fish in both pegs now. And we've got one on there. What we did that job, well we've been feeding a little nugget of ground bait I've just changed it and tapped a few four mils in. So, my way of thinking with that is if you're tapping a few four mils in and you're fishing a four mil expander on the hook, you're mimicking your bait anyway, but um, it's giving them something to focus in on. Whereas ground bait and expanders, there's not much for them to, not a lot of food for them, not much to eat. If they can see a few falls on the bottom, we're, uh, we're sure end up with a quicker bite. And that fish is nailed anyway. But yeah, great fish. Right, what I'm going to do, the wind has um, just increased slightly. And there's a bit of an horrible skim on top, so it's making it so that we can't see exactly what what's happening with the float. So what would I've just dipped the end of it just in a little tiny bit of the grease, just to hold that bristle up a tiny bit more. And 
it should make this, the job a little tiny bit easier. What I'm going to do again is just tap a few more falls in. Not many, 10 pellets. Just see if we can catch one more fish on this one. And then hopefully we can have a nice run on the positive line. And catch a few fish. We'll just go back in again. Tap them few pellets in. Swing your bulk over the top of your pellets. Lower your rig down slowly. So what that grease did then, it's just held my bristle up another 3 mil, but 3 mil is enough to see it when you start getting a bad skim on the top. And what we've done with that one is it's let us see the bite and we've caught the fish. Angry skimmers. <laughs> Another nice fish. Right, I can't wait anymore. Too many signs of fish on the positive line, so I'm having a go. Now I'm not going to do anything different than what I've been doing on my on my left hand line. I'm just going to tap a few four mil pellets in because if it's working on one line, there's no reason why it won't work on that. Right, so on this line, what I'm on on the positive positive line, um, I fed two balls, uh, two two big pots at the beginning. Um, with mainly ground bait, but only a few micros in it, nothing else. Just ground bait and micros. Two balls that are hard enough to stay and break down. A little bit of loose over the top of it. But we've, uh, we've let this settle for, it's been two hours. I've topped it up with one little nugget after an hour. And I think with a few fish on it. So like we've been doing on our left hand swim, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna tap a few pellets in, see if we can focus them fish to one area. And we'll see if we can catch one for you. started off smack on our feed so what I've said to you when we fed it we fed it with the dolly butt on the joint so not on the complete end of the pole we're right over our feed now but because we fed a volume of it we want the option to fish around it because sometimes it's easier to catch your skimmers and your, your bigger fish your bream and stuff like that it's easier to catch them away from your bait. So what the ball does originally, what the initial feed does is focus them in on an area. 
but you want to be fishing sometimes on like the edge of the dinner plate if that makes sense now, i've missed two bites now over that and not fed near on anything so what i'm going to do is not feed this time but what i will do is go to the end of my pole and fish half a section behind me feed and that was a positive bite just behind the feed and he's on Right, so what we're going to do, we're going to get our head round what's happening with the feeding on the right hand swim now. We'll uh, try and find some answers and I'm going to get back to you towards the end of the session. We are back, we're still on our positive rig, uh, on our positive line, sorry. What I've ended up doing is changing to the Cipre, so it's a lighter rig, so it's going through the water that bit, bit better, a bit slower. But what's been apparent that it's been quite a bit better, it's feeding four mils. So the soak four mils, what we've, what we've shown you this morning, We've just been tapping 10 pellets in, putting that rigging over the top of it, and we're getting a bite. We're getting a bite every time we go in, more or less. We're not, it's not frantic, um, but we are we're catching the fish now. We're not getting no silly indications, we're not getting no silly bites. If I was, if I were to come and fish the same peg again, if I come and sat here tomorrow, um, I would feed a few more four mils from off. Uh, I definitely think the ground bait's helped in resting the line, and it's all, it's kept the it's kept the fish in the peg because there's not a lot of food but a lot of smell. So it's done its job in that way. But I think to catch the fish, we've had a lot better response. Tapping a few four mils in and fishing the rig over the top just like this one well we've been patient we've um, not rushed anything but we've tapped a few fours in and we've fished that expander over the top of it and we're nailing a few so I think this will be a good fish to end the session on. It's been a great day. And we've caught quite a few of these. We've, uh, we've finished our session today at Partridge. Um, we've had a good day. I think, like I say, if I could have sat here again tomorrow, I would have definitely focused more on four mils. Uh, the lighter rig, the Cypress, picked out better fish, and I think that's because they can watch the bait through the water. Um, I think they can see it that bit longer, that bit more. We've caught some good fish on that. We've probably had 30, 35 pounders skimmers, something like that. Good day's fishing. 
especially when, like we said, we've, we've, sing, we've tried to single out skimmers and we have caught skimmers by only using pellets. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, you know, like I said, we, uh, we've done it right. I think, I think we've worked a few things out. We've used, like, the four mils have been good. Um, yeah, that's us. So yeah, if you, uh, if you like what you watched, don't forget to like and subscribe the video and uh, you'll see my ugly mug again. So that'll be us, brother. So yeah, see you later.